Welcome to the advanced section of the video tutorials. Now you know how to install and make basic AC and how to make objects that interact with players. You also know how to use trigger redirection, maps, functions and redirect ID. This lesson will encompass some more features you can use to enhance your interactive stages and truly take them to the next level. Now, let's imagine the following scenario. In our stage, COF 2000, we want to put a barrier that delimits a stage zone. And we've also added a quite conspicuous boat for other reasons. This time, we will tackle things differently. First, I already added all the sprites into the stage SFF. Second, we will modify the actual stage file a bit more, adding the barrier itself, the boat, restricting the starting space and adding some extra stuff we'll show later. Only then do we make our CHR file with all the contents of the dev, the CMD and the animations and referring to our SND and our ZSS files and to the SFF of the stage itself. Now let's plan some things out. We want players to be able to break that barrier and cross into the other section of the stage. If the player just bumps into it, we want it to stop them, and we don't want it to be able to be jumped over. This was doable with helpers and certain workarounds in Mugen, but it could break characters that were coded without failsafes and had a go to the edge of the stage state. Think uh, Rugal's God Press move. In Ikemengo, it can be done without risking any bugs. How? Well, Ikemen Go 099 implemented Modify Stage Var, a great feature that allows us to actually change stage definitions like shadow length and color, reflections, offset, boundaries and more. In this case, we will use the knowledge from the previous lesson to code a breakable object that, once broken, changes the bound left of the current stage and allows players to go into the left area of the stage. So first, we code our stage elements, the negative states, the specific states for the barrier. But what if we wanted to define the position of this barrier according to the stage, instead of in a fixed spot? Let's imagine we have another stage with an off-limit section and we want to expand it differently. One way is to manage this according to the stage name. If we have a certain stage name, we will define the position of the barrier and the stage size increase according to it. Another, better one, is to somehow read data from the stage itself, so that the stage tells our barrier where to appear. And then we just type this data into each stage. So it summons the barrier and expands the size of the stage behind it. This has a huge advantage. It allows us to not just work with a fixed amount of stages, but with as many stages as we want, as long as we add this data into the stage file definition. Yes, since the data is not in the attached char, it can be added by the stage maker, making it easier to edit and make a universal system. For this, we will use the stage const feature. See, Eichmann Go allows us to have stage constants. Like character constants, these are akin to variables that we name and get values to and that can be read via the attached char with the specific trigger, stage const, and the proper syntax. Where does the constant section go? Right after the music one. So, we are just going to have our barrier appear in the stage constants, barrier pos x, and we will also add a broken barrier value. And voila! Our stages are now defining both where the barrier should show up and how much to increase in size. If you check the specific code for the barrier, you will see the coding refers to a function that is run for all eight players all the time, like in the previous tutorial. This allows for very easy debugging instead of copying and pasting the same code eight times. And if you check the function in detail, it will trigger with get hits certain state numbers, and even some animations for all players. 
players also have to be facing in a certain direction, have certain speed. This is done to make the system as compatible as possible with pretty much any character. And once the barrier is broken, let's use modify stage bar with the proper parameters and that's it. Our players can now head left to the end of the stage. A detail that some might have missed is that the stage barrier, unlike our barrels, is displayed as part of the actual stage. We wanted it to be a true stage element instead of an on top of everything helper or explode, so we could alter its behavior whenever we wanted and still be behind other stuff. How can we make it disappear then? There is a very flexible way, though, to actually modify stage elements via a touch char commands, and that is modify BG control. BG controllers are one of the most powerful and advanced Mugen stage features, and they allow us to do truly complex behavior in our stage objects. Movement, animation changes, and other aspects can be defined via this instruction that is detailed in Cybuster's tutorial. Thing is. Ikemengo defines an extra parameter that can be integrated into all this. State controller ID is the way to communicate between the attached char and a BG controller. This way, we can use all the triggers of the ZSS toolbox to define behaviors in our stages. So now, we will just make the stage element barrier invisible when the helper detects the conditions are given as a normal object with a specific ID number via modify BG controller. We are also going to use the helper itself to show the destroyed barrier and that's it. True interaction with the between layers set piece. Now for the second part of this video tutorial. We've placed an animated boat stage object that moves up and down and we want the lamp to light up when either player is low on life. Simple, right? We have the sprites for the light, which is an X blood. We got the object, place it behind everything via the under parameter, and we have it change animations when either player has less than 20% of its maximum life. Thing is, the lamp should move differently, right? It shouldn't scroll with the players on the front layer, it should move more slowly, like it had a lower delta. Let's use the pot's rice pigeon trick to simulate a delta for it. it. Just consists of having a helper that is positioned in the middle of the stage, root is usually this one, and that will work as a reference position. Let's use some math, and now the lamp syncs properly with the back object, like it should. But the boat has a sin y effect. So now we use the sin y sync formula which Whiplash kindly helped me with. Just copy and paste these formulas according to whatever stage element you need to sync and remember to account for pauses and super pauses. And last but not least, if you are placing stage elements, remember we should always give them the under parameter so we don't accidentally hide crucial graphical elements like life bars and power bars. This is why we shouldn't use helpers for objects like these. And now our King of Fighters stage has a lot of interactivity. To recount what this lesson had, we learned how to use modify stage bar to change crucial stage aspects, use stage constants to dynamically read true stage data, I use this to make all my systems, use modify BG controller to alter actual stage elements, and use the POTS rice pigeon delta simulation trick, a way to fake the Zin X and Zin Y parameter with helpers and explodes, and to use the under explode parameter. I think this is more than enough to cover the theoretical part of the tutorial. I am not holding back any weird tricks, these are all my secrets. Now, for the final video in this tutorial, the next one, we will be talking bonus stages and coding some examples of very unusual interactions. A spike trap, a healing item, a power up that increases damage and a stage fatality. Here's hoping you're all doing okay. See you soon 